And welcome to a new episode of PR 360. And I'm your host, Brett Dice. If you please subscribe to PR 360 on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music. Leave a review. It really does help with the rankings and let us know how we are doing. And also subscribe to the YouTube channel for all these lovely YouTube videos as well. But this week, I have Adam Brady with me. And we're going to be talking about, well, sports and sports PR. Something a little new for us, but still... Really, really going to be interesting, but he's been with the Ducks and the Honda Center for more than 16 years overseeing digital content that includes team, arena website, social media, and mobile apps, as well as publication, game day programs, commemorative books, and so much more. So welcome to the show, Adam. Thank you. Good to be here. And uh, first question I ask all my guests is, are you a coffee or tea drinker? <laughs> uh Currently, uh, I'm definitely a coffee drinker. Um, I don't currently have one in front of me here. It's a little bit later in the day, but I've, I've had my uh, my mandatory two already today. So I, I'm not against tea. I guess I, I take the slightly take the Ted Lasso approach of not understanding why people like tea, <laughs> uh, but definitely coffee. Fair enough. I mean, I like both, <laughs> and I'm still drink- <laughs> I'm still drinking mine. So, oh, perfect. And you and you have the uh, right cup for it too. I do. And can you, I gave a brief explanation about your expertise. Can you give a little bit more to our audience? Yeah. So um, as you mentioned, I've been with the Ducks for 16 years. It's kind of hard to believe it's, it's been that long. I guess this is my 17th NHL season with the team, but um, the job has evolved over the years. I mean, I'm, I'm old enough to remember when, when I first started the job, social media wasn't even a, a thing, let alone, thing in sports, but um, it, it has evolved into being a major, major part um, of, of my job at the Ducks and Honda Center. Um, so basically, I, I do as, as publications or director of publications and digital content, I do oversee our, our publications, which, as you said, is game program and some commemorative books that I've uh, been lucky enough to work on, um, especially surrounding our, our uh, 25th anniversary as a team. But But mostly uh, the day-to-day is um, heavily leaning toward the digital content, which is overseeing um, our social media, our uh, Ducks and Honda Center websites, um, and some other websites, including OC Vibe, which is an entertainment district that uh, we have in the works, Um, and then also um, our mobile apps. And we are, uh, that includes the Ducks mobile app, and we are currently developing and about ready to release a Honda Center mobile app. So... Um, I oversee a very small department of uh, two guys plus me, um, but that's basically uh, most of all of uh, what that encompasses. Nice. I mean, <laughs> two people doing all the stuff that you guys do, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Well, it's two plus me, so so it's it's three. But yeah, it's uh, one of the smaller departments in our organization, but uh, we're able to get it done with a, with a lean and mean staff. Nice. And when it comes to content, what do you find is more engaging through the pandemic and everything else, or what has become more engaging? Well, through the pandemic, I mean, that's a whole other conversation that, that got interesting and very challenging. But but for us, um, you know, I, I can speak generally about social media, about what's engaging. But for us, um, as an organization, um, we um, we find that the, the most engaging stuff is the nostalgic type stuff, uh, because... For those who don't know, our, our team was founded as the uh, Mighty Ducks of Anaheim that stemmed from the uh, Disney movie. Um, over the years, when uh, Disney sold the team to our great owners that currently own the team, we sort of got away from the from the Disney dynamic. We've sort of returned to our roots a little bit here and there, especially surrounding our anniversary that we had a couple seasons ago, um, to embrace, uh, the, embrace the Mighty, so to speak. Um, but anything that we do um, that's related to the Mighty Ducks um, movie and, and that old logo, and, and we even got involved with some of the cast of the movie. Um, that's that stuff is very very popular. The other uh, type of content that's really popular for us in particular is anything surrounding our younger players. Uh, one of the fun things about our team right now is we have some really exciting uh, young players. We have some great veteran players that have been um, uh, pillars of our team for for a long time, but we have some really uh, great, fun, young players like Trevor Zegris and 
and uh, Jamie Drysdale and Troy Terry, who just made the All Star game. Um, and so any of our uh, of our content that involves those guys, and those guys happen to have really really good personalities, especially Terry, who's who's uh, turned out to be an incredible talent and very uh, creative on the ice and, and and very engaging off it. But um, we have a fan base uh, that embraces anything that we do with the young guys, and that's the type of content that, that really resonates for us. Gotcha. And then TikTok, well, basically exploded for yeah. a long time, but it really, really upped its game with being the number one actual website to go to. So what are your right. tips for PR pros trying to get figure out TikTok? Because it's not the most easiest one to figure out. Yeah, it's video, but it's video in a different way. So what do you have, yeah. do you have any tips for PR pros? Well, we have sort um, I think we've done a nice job. We, we're still sort of um, uh, branching into TikTok. Uh, we haven't, um, I, it, it doesn't have a long history for us <laughs> as some of the other platforms have like Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, but um, our guys and, and I credit uh, our, uh, our social media producer, Tyler Pistoia and um, our, our uh, and digital content producers, actually his style and our other digital content producer, whose name is Matt Willer, have done a really nice job trying to get us to expand into TikTok. And we've done some fun videos. I think um, the key to TikTok is knowing that it's a, it's a, it goes without saying that it's a different platform than say Instagram and Twitter, but kind of embracing um, that it's, that it's a different style of platform. It's, it's a little less formal. It's a little more casual. Um, you know, certainly you're leaning on uh, videos that are shot mostly probably with a phone than, than a really high, uh, high end camera. Um, it's certainly revolving around short videos. Um, and so we've done some fun stuff that we might not have normally done on the other platforms, um, which, uh, and we have some, some others that are coming down the pike. So our, our guys have done some, some fun things like, like showing you, uh, little known hockey rules, um, by recreating them on the ice in kind of a fun way with a couple guys dressed up, you know, in hockey gear and, and, a, and a referee and the whole thing. So, um, I think, I think just kind of embracing the casual nature of it, the short nature of it, knowing that TikTok's not necessarily about timeliness. It's more about evergreen content that could be enjoyed, you know, a week, a month, or even a year from now, um, you know, whether it shows up in, in, on people's For You pages. So sort of embracing that it's, um, it's unique um, and, and getting creative with it and trying things that uh, might not necessarily work, but, but giving it a shot to, to, to see if it does. I think that's probably... Uh, the, the tips that I would give for that for that platform. So just a lot of experimenting and see what sticks for yeah, your brand. Yeah, I, I think so. I think exactly. Gotcha. And then even moving on to more esports because the pandemic kind of all sports stopped basically, and so yeah. professional sports had to lean into something else. And so has esports been a boon for you guys for getting new new fans that may have not actually been fans without Twitch and now without. Yeah. Uh, NHL from EA or anything like that? Yeah, and certainly uh, with the pandemic, we had to get creative as far as providing content. And one of those things was getting into esports and, and setting up, um, you know, some virtual games. We did like a virtual game between the Ducks and Kings that was actually aired on our um, uh, uh, on our uh, provider, on our cable provider um, one night. That was kind of fun. But yeah, it's, I, I think, I guess the... Um, the intent of it, and, and again, with esports, similar to TikTok, I guess, where we're still relatively new in it, but I think that we're really doing a nice job in that space. Um, the, you know, there are there are fans of other teams that are sort of uh, latching on to the Ducks because um, and our brand through esports, and um, we have players on our team that are younger guys that are into playing um, themselves or getting into the chat rooms and 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 taking part. But I think it's it's. Um, its long-term goal is similar to some other programs that we have and to um, getting younger people or people that might not necessarily be in our normal demographic or our normal audience, but getting them interested in hockey um, through a different avenue and, and sort of nurturing those fans in a similar way that, that we do with, with our other programs, like our score, score programs and our other fan development programs where we're trying to get kids into hockey. So, um, you know, kind of creating that content and, and, and using the, the, the real hockey players um, uh, through those games is, is just another way that we're, we're hoping to build a fan base. 
we're not necessarily seeing the payoff of that right now, but it's something down the road um, that we're hoping for. And as we delve into it even more with tournaments and whatnot, we're really, we're, you know, we're really, like I said, we're really only scratching the surface of what we can do with it, but we hope it's um, something that will continue to, you know, help the organization grow through that. Mm -hmm. And with basically almost having sports year round with esports and then the regular season, have you seen it being a boon in content for all year round content for amazing plays, both digitally and physically? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the intent um, that, you know, obviously it's something that can live on all year round, even when, you know, the hockey season is long enough as it is. And, and we hope not going to wood that it's even longer for us this season as, as far as a postseason playoff goes. Playoffs go, but yeah, that's something that we uh, certainly learned, especially during the pandemic when there were no um, when there were no hockey games at all. It, it is definitely something that that's evergreen and, and can last uh, throughout the off season. Mm -hmm. And then, have you seen different generational differences with consuming content? Because I'm pretty sure you still have like the paper stuff, but you also have the digital stuff at the same time. Have you? And the, you said yeah. commemorative stuff too. So, have you seen that? divide between who consumes what yeah and i think uh, i mean i think it's you know it seems like obvious to say oh the the slightly older fan base uh, sort of uh, uh is more into facebook than they might be on twitter and, and instagram that's not a hard and fast rule but um our facebook crowd uh really loves the nostalgic stuff that i talked about before these are people who um you know it's it seems I mean, it's a good 28 years ago now or something like that. But <laughs> these are people who got into the team or even got into the sport of hockey through the Mighty Ducks movies. Um, and then they they also remember the old players like like Paul Correa and, and Guy Bear and, and even Tamu Solani, who, who they grew up with. So they, you know, they love um, that nostalgic stuff. And, and we do some throwback stuff from time to time. In fact, today's Thursday, so we're... We're, uh, we still, we haven't put it out yet, but we're doing our uh, our our sponsored Throwback Thursday uh, content. So we'll probably have something revolving around the All Star Game or something like that today, since the All Star Game is coming up. But but they they tend um, they they tend to enjoy that nostalgic stuff a little more. And then you know, and then our younger fans, like I said earlier, are really into the stuff that involves like the younger the players, the players that are similar to their age. Um, so it is a little bit compartmentalized in that aspect, but it's not a hard and fast rule as far as this demographic only likes this and this demographic only likes that. But, but we do see some trends here and there. Mm -hmm. And even going into newer trends with like NFTs and player cards, I've seen all that stuff. Do you guys intend to look into it? I'm not saying you should do anything, but look into it because it's all the rage right now. I mean, Twitter has their NFT profile pictures. Are you going to see sports yeah. doing that with their content as well with NFTs? Yeah, it's something that we've barely talked about and talked about dipping our toe in the water on, so to speak. It's something that we've talked about with our contacts at the, at the NHL. Um, it's not uh, something that we've really delved into quite yet. Um, you know, we've been focusing on other areas of our marketing efforts, but it's it's certainly something that um, you know there's a number of things on the horizon that that we want to to dip into more, and that includes things like TikTok, and that includes NFTs, and that includes uh, branching out to other audiences like our Spanish speaking audience. We've done a, a few things there, and we we can always do more. So NFTs are on that list of things that we we definitely want to look into as far as uh, you know um, increasing the Ducks brand. And then for video content wise, it's, it's pretty important nowadays to at least attempt or have your video content being created. So do you have any tips for those trying to get started? Cause video is not as easy as what people may think because there's a lot lighting sound and everything. Yeah. So do you have any tips for that? Yeah. But the, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, with, with video, like obviously higher quality uh, is better. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be high quality uh, to be engaging. You know, it, obviously, uh, uh, you know, we we put out different types of videos with our organization. We have a series called All Access, um, which is sort of behind the scenes stuff, players mic'd up, um, et cetera, et cetera. That is really high quality. And our uh, our game entertainment crew who puts those together does a phenomenal job. I mean, if you've ever watched... Um, you know, Hard Knocks on HBO or the 24-7 series that HBO's done. It's very similar to that. And it's very, 
very high production value. Um, that being said, video content, um, you know, when you're talking about PR, you're talking about, you know, social media it does not have to be super high quality, 4K camera, perfect lighting, perfect framing, et cetera, et cetera. It's great when it is, but even the, the raw stuff, if you're shooting it with, a, with an old iPhone or, um, you know, anything that, that you see is, is being engaging and it can, doesn't have to be a, you know, a six and a half minute video feature. It can be something really, really short. Um, you know, that stuff does just as well, um, you know, as, as anything high quality. Like we see tremendous numbers in some of our short, almost accidental videos, like an outtake from something or somebody says something goofy in a press conference or is wearing something or, you know, even silly things like, you know, our players arriving for the game, getting out of their cars and arriving to the game. Like that doesn't have to be high quality. That can be shot with a phone. And, you know, anything that you see is potentially engaging doesn't necessarily you know, have to be a, a, a James Cameron production for it, for it to be engaging. It's, you know, it's, it's anything that you think might, might appeal to, to the audience. And, and if people are more accepting these days of, of, you know, video that's not necessarily a, uh, HD or 4k, you know, as long as it's um, something engaging, something behind the scenes, something where, you know, the personality of the, of the players in our case is, is being uh, exposed. Um, that's the type of video that really, you know, really resonates with people. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a delineation in content. You got your video and you could even delineate it with social. And then I guess YouTube, because YouTube could be actually pretty high quality if you yeah, want to actually sure. do it. You have your yeah. eventually audio only because you have Twitter spaces and clubhouse and everything else. And then yeah. you have your pictures right. and then you have your written maybe your paper content. So how do you keep that all in order? I mean, that's a lot of different yeah. buckets to, to fill. I know it's not easy. And, you know, it's my job to kind of oversee that and, and uh, sort of prioritize and compartmentalize. And um, with the two guys who work for me, they, they both uh, do a tremendous job in um, being sort of uh, jack of all trades types of guys. So we've got all three of us can, can each uh, do a little bit of writing um, we can each do a little bit of video editing. Uh, we can each do a little bit of photography. Uh, one of my guys who oversees our, or runs our social has, has actually uh, gone so far as to take a couple of photography classes to get better in that respect. He's not the team photographer, um, but, but there are areas where we need him to shoot photos. And um, so that's the key is, uh, it, it, it is it is tough to prioritize, um, to decide, okay, we're putting this out and then this out. Um, Video these days is king, and we're putting out more video than we ever have, and it's it's really, um, you know, it's really working for us as far as you know getting our our uh, audience engaged. So we lean pretty heavily on video, and then um, obviously there, there's still um, high priority for, for written pieces for for you know good quality photography um, and everything else that we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, even speaking about. A little bit about the audio content do you guys utilize like the podcast and will you eventually utilize maybe twitter spaces or maybe clubhouse but one of those I think yeah. linkedin's trying to do it too this year as well yeah we definitely want so we've had podcasts in the past as of now we do not currently have a ducks podcast but i can guarantee you that will be uh that will be coming down the road there's there's talk um, about things that we want to do with audio, whether that's our radio broadcast, um, streaming our radio broadcast, or, you know, uh, creating, like some teams have done, um, a 24-7, um, like, audio network where you have audio content throughout the day, and that would include potty, uh, uh, podcasts or, um, you know, audio replays of games or um, interviews and that type of stuff, um, you know, Twitter spaces uh, is certainly an area that, that we want to delve into that we, we haven't um, we haven't gone full blast into yet. But but there's a lot of potential out there with with audio that, that we want to get deeper into. Nice. And then what's in store for the future of content creation and development? What do you see coming down the pipeline in this year and beyond? Yeah, I mean, that's part of it. Like more, more audio is part of it. Um, you know, any clever video ideas that we can come up with with, with our players is, is huge. Um, the biggest thing is with COVID restrictions, and, and they kind of gone back and forth over the past couple of years, but 
you know, we're trying to, to come up with content that doesn't physically require us to be physically, uh, doesn't require us to be physically near our players. Um, and so, you know, that could be through something that you and I are doing right now, which is, you know, a virtual interview or, or that could be through, you know, some other avenues. Um, with TikTok, where we're delving into some some other uh, potential material and content ideas, my guys, I shouldn't give this away, but my guys are thinking about doing um, some uh, great moments in Ducks history, recreated poorly TikTok videos, um, which which could be really funny. It wouldn't involve our players at all. It's just some fun stuff um, that the Ducks are putting out and leaning on the nostalgia of some of our uh, more famous moments in history. So um, things like that, you know, there's, there's ever evolving um, platforms. There's, you know, there could be something that, you know, becomes extremely popular two weeks from now that we haven't even thought of yet, um, which is one of the cool things about social media is keeping up the trends and knowing that things, you know, are forever evolving and, um, you know, somehow sometimes deciding, okay, we're not going to do this as much anymore. We used to be heavily into Facebook. Now we're not as much anymore now. It's, you know, Instagram and it's Instagram stories and now it's TikTok and um, whatever else is coming down the road. So um, there's a lot of potential out there for doing some new and exciting stuff and, and kind of keeping up with with uh, trends of what other sports teams and what, you know, what other entities are doing on social and digital and otherwise. Nice. And then fun question for you. If you could actually be a pro duck player, like professional players on the Ducks team, what position would you want to play? <laughs> Um, I have always uh, thought that I would love to play, uh, center goal. Goaltender is, uh, goaltender is a great position in that it's sort of like NFL quarterback where sometimes you get too much credit and sometimes you get too much blame. Um, I would love to play center because, um, it's, it's sort of more of a two way position. You, you have to have some defensive responsibility. Um, and I like the playmaking aspect of it. Um, Obviously, the center can do some some goal scoring, but um, the center is also relied uh, or expected to to create for other players and um, you know uh, see the ice and, and and make the pinpoint passes and and make your teammates better. So that's a that's a position that's always appealed to me. If I were a Ducks player, that's that's the position I would pick if I could. Nice. And any final thoughts for our listeners? Um, yeah, just, you know, I will say, if, you know, for those who are interested in, in hockey and the Anaheim Ducks in particular, it's a really, really exciting uh, time for us. Um, it's been a really uh, fun season so far and a season that we thought that we might be in sort of a rebuilding process. Um, the team has performed much, much better as far as wins and losses than we could have expected. Um, and going along with that, I mentioned earlier, we have some really exciting guys uh, some young guys that, um, you know, are, are willing to uh, take part in some of the, the, the content ideas that we've had, video and otherwise. Um, and so, you know, those, those are guys that are in their early 20s that are just going to get uh, better as players. And um, so we do have somewhat of a rebuilding process going on with our team, but we're also in the midst of a team that's currently in playoff position. Um, and it's been really, really fun. And our fans have responded. Um, winning helps everything, certainly, but... Um, We've also, you know, been lucky enough to create a lot of fun, engaging content that our fans are really responding to, and we want to just keep that going. So um, it's a really exciting time for social media in general, certainly, but um, for me in particular, and and for uh, working for this team for, like we said, sixteen years, this is a uh, this is one of the more exciting times in, in my career with the Ducks um, that I can remember, as far as you know, things that we've done content wise and in. in, in uh, and the potential for what we can do down the road. All right. Thank you, Adam, for joining PR 360 and sharing your knowledge on content in the ducks. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Appreciate it. And thank you for listening to PR 360. As always, please subscribe to PR 360 on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music. Leave a review. It really does help with the rankings. Let us know how we're doing. And subscribe to the YouTube page to get these lovely YouTube videos as well. And join us next week as we talk to another great thought leader in the PR industry. All right, guys, stay safe. Get to understanding TikTok video and other content. See you next week. Later. Later.